Well, good evening and welcome to About the Valley with uh, our guest tonight, as we told you earlier, Jamie Lucchini. Lucchini. Like? Lucchini, close enough. <laughs> okay. Uh, DP, uh, no, not DPW director, highway superintendent. There you go. You know <laughs> One thing at a time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, and, and that, make, that makes a big difference because he doesn't answer questions about the water department. That's his <laughs> boss. Same with the sewer department. All right? So, let's stick to the roads, the streets. <laughs> let's try to. <laughs> and and that's, what we're talk, that's what we want to talk to Jamie about tonight. As we know, there's a town meeting Tuesday night, this Tuesday coming up, and then there'll be an election two weeks after that. Yep. And at both places... In, in both cases, uh, town meeting we have to vote to do a debt exclusion for the um, uh, highway department. Yes, sir. And that's the only one, the only debt exclusions on the warrant. And then that debt exclusion would go on the ballot and it has to be voted in the affirmative on the ballot for things to happen. Yep. And we want to get into right away exactly what you're looking for. Two, two very uh, vital pieces of equipment for yep. a DPW. One that I'm sure everyone remembers the winter we just came out of, and I'm glad to see we <laughs> are still we. here and everything's not leaking and we're in good shape. But yeah. we lost one of our only wing plow this winter. Uh, we knew it was in rough shape going into yep. it. We put some patches on it, tried to bypass a few things, and that lasted for a little while. And then finally it f completely failed. So we were down our most vital plow truck when we really started snowing but we uh mixed and matched and got through temporarily knowing that hopefully we could get uh a truck on the books for this year's town meeting to try and replenish some of the equipment that we've been using before we get into the next item the wing plow now people are uh, talking about that's a truck that has a plow on the side yes we have a have an 11 foot plow on the front and it has a 10 foot plow on the side that takes you know about 24 feet of plow space as it's going down the road and it really pushes back the roads and it's a vital piece of equipment i mean we have one we're trying to replace it hopefully we will be able to do that right you also can use that to cut the snow piles down you it's called shelving yes in yes. a situation like we had this winter it would have been very helpful to have a reliable wing plow we could have went and knocked down some of the snow banks that were out there i mean to a degree this was pretty much an extreme situation we had this year right. so uh, the usual tricks of the trade wouldn't have really applied but in a normal situation it can help well, you, you out. try to do that so that you got a place to put the next storm. exactly you make room you make room right. for more snow <laughs> <laughs> this this winter just didn't stop <laughs> you never had time to make <laughs> no. more room 110 inches is in I believe it was five weeks it's only a couple of feet of snow a week <laughs> it, yeah, it started out like a pretty good winter it was great up until January 23rd yeah that's when literally the bottom fell out we went to work that morning and I came home I believe in halfway through March <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean it didn't it didn't stop February didn't stop no, at all no it didn't and when it snowed it snowed fast and furious yes and so you know th and that's a sign that there's a possibility we're going into that uh, type of winter now it, everything goes in stages and recycles you might say and you go through a dry spell where you may have even mild winters I remember back in the early 70s they were talking about a new ice age we had a winter it sure felt like it this year yeah, <laughs> we were talking about, they were talking about winters like we just had yep. and it and that uh, ended up with the blizzard of 78 and then after that we went to a mild spell yep. for a long time. A lot of the storms now, even the rainstorms, if you think about it, over the last five or ten years, it, when even when it rains, it's everything's a hundred-year flood now, or you know, you get three yep. inches of rain inside of ten hours. It's not like it used to be where it rained for a couple of days, and now it's all everything comes really hard. And it, well, you get to get these uh, uh, what do you call them cells that go through, yeah, and just drop the a super lot cells. of rain. Yes. Yep. And that's the problem you have as well because you have to keep the storm drains clean. Which leads to our other item we have on the town right. meeting uh, agenda is a new street sweeper. Uh, as when we put it to bed last fall, it was no secret. I, anyone that asked, I would have told them that it was falling apart. I mean, I knew when we pulled it out, we we're going to have problems. Our mechanic did the best he could. We got it back out there, it swept for one day and broke down. We brought it in. It always happens, you know, at the springtime, you know, when you right. first get stuff out there. We brought it out a second day and it... It's been down now for about two and a half weeks. We just got the parts in. Uh, they were tough to get the parts because it's an older machine. We got them in. We're trying to put it back together so we have something to take care of this spring. Uh, we actually had to go out and subcontract 
uh, private contractor this week to come in and at least sweep the main lines because safety was getting there. It was a lot of sand on the roads from everything yeah. that happened. And people are on their motorcycles and their bicycles now. They're doing road races. Uh, we got to at least get the people are traveling to work. We got to well, at least we get. we had the funeral. Yeah, that was very unfortunate all around. Yeah, I, it was I mean, a really. You wanted to get things cleaned up. You wanted to have at least looking decent. What we ended up doing was we were lucky enough that the town of Sutton sent us a street sweeper with an operator for a day. So we had to maximize what we could do in a very short time. So I had our crew come in at midnight, and the gentleman from Sutton came in at midnight with the street sweeper, and we had everybody blow off the downtown with backpacks and everything. Oh. And on the uh, the procession route for the funeral, I, I mean, I know it was an inconvenience for a lot of people because they heard a snow, you know, a leaf blower out in their windows at two in the morning. But I would have liked to give people notice, but we just didn't have that luxury. It had right. to be done yesterday. Right. And I just had to make a decision to get out there, and we had a very limited window of opportunity with the street sweeper coming from another town. So we basically swept everywhere from the Upton Town Line to the Pine Grove Cemetery inside of 15 hours, which was really good. It was, the yeah. guys did an unbelievable yeah. job. Your crew has gone all out, and, and after getting off a rough winter. Yes, it's, it's still got jet lag from it, I think. It's, it's, and I can't blame them. It was, it took its toll on everybody. It, you know, the, the people, it, how many people are out there shoveling their roofs off? Now, you know, you get right into <laughs> this, and it's, it's and, been and trying. Yeah. Now, Uxbridge came in and helped you out on the cemetery, right? And then the following day, Uxbridge called up, and they donated a sweeper and a gentleman to operate the sweeper. They swept the Pine Grove Cemetery for us, as well as a couple other roads that were involved in the, the funeral and whatnot. And unfortunately, that was their backup sweeper as well, because their frontline sweeper was down. They sent their backup. They got through everything we wanted them to do, and then their sweeper broke oh. down. So we had to get it back to Uxbridge. So it, it's... It's been a very trying spring for a lot of communities around here, including us. <laughs> now, uh, you know, it's, it, we know mutual aid between the police department and the fire department, but now we got it through the highway department. There's a lot more of that than you'd think. We try to help each other out. Everybody's yep. in the same boat. You know, you right. can't do that much in the winter because, you know, you, you're taxed as it is in your own town. Right. But when other opportunities arise, you, you pitch in when you can, you know, right. and it was for a very good cause, a very sad cause. It was, we didn't have to do it for that reason. but. Yes. It had to be done, and my, my crew, and thanks to the donations from the surrounding towns, we, we got it done. And, and no small part to the Worcester County Sheriff's Office, too. Yeah, they sent the crew in the clean They, the sent, they right? sent six crews in. Wow. We uh, got in contact with them because we opened up for this, and it was a 35-acre cemetery there that hadn't been touched yet. Yeah. And coming off a, you know, a lot of snow and a lot of damage and whatnot, and we just didn't have the manpower to do the streets in the cemetery. So the Worcester County Sheriff, Lou Evangelitis, really shifted some things around and got out of his way to send out about five or six work crews we had for three days to really clean up that cemetery and have it very presentable for everything that went on. And I was very proud of what we got done, what our guys did. It, it really was a very good reflection of this town. And not, not for anything, but when we were out there the day of the funeral, I thought it was fantastic, the outpouring of support that this town had for that young yes. man. The, the streets were lined, and it was a cold day. It was very cold, cold and rainy. And, rainy. <laughs> and to see the parents that had their children out there with the flags and to see yes. Church Street lined all the way, it was it was a very yes. good showing, I think, for this area. It really, 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 really proved it well. Was school vacation week. Yeah. And, and Patriots Day, out. ironically. Patriots Day, and these kids came out in the rain and... Uh, yeah. To, to show their uh, their feeling for this young man who lost his life defending us. Yeah, absolutely. Say the cemetery. Yep. It's, it's in your hands now. Yes, it has been since October thirty first. Yes. Yep. Uh, if you didn't have this situation, would you been able to get it ready for Memorial Day? And we had plans in place. We were going to uh, utilize the Worcester County Highway. Uh, Worcester. Sheriff's Department is uh, well again in uh, May. We still have them scheduled to come out and do some work. So we had some contingency plans, and it would have been a little slower. I'm, I'm sure my guys, we would have got it done. It had wouldn't have been done as quick. Has it gone down a little bit over the years? Because I know they, they cut their crew, the former uh, people had, had at the trust. As far as? Maintenance. I mean, is it? It's, it, it, it has to be. In tip top shape for Memorial Day. That is the right, but I mean, holy grail when of. When you took it over, was it was it somewhat? It was it was in good shape. It was in very good shape. I mean, you know, the the they people who worked it took. Crew. They did. They had two two full timers, and uh, you tend to find in, in cemeteries where people work at cemeteries, they, they take a lot of pride in it. Yeah. And they did. You it, you could tell. You know, and it, it was very hard for them to let it go. And we're just doing our best to fulfill everything that they did for the people that 
pay for perpetual care in that cemetery. I mean, that's probably the most his historic cemetery in town, even though it's not the oldest, because a lot of the founding fathers of the White Machine Works. There's a lot of those. The Whiten family is all buried over there. You can't miss them. them when you pull in. They're all the big yeah. structures right in the front. Yes. Yeah. And there's a lot of historical cemeteries in this town. I don't know. We have about 13 cemeteries in this town yeah. that we take care of. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of them are a couple of graves, you know, and most people yep. would drive by them and probably not even know they were there. But well, there's a great one is right down in Plumbers. Yes. Right across, right across Dunkin, Dunkin' Donuts. Dun Dunkin' Donuts. Yep. There's a fence, yep. but you can't see the stones. No, there's two little stones in the back. Yeah. And that, that was that was actually a pretty challenging part when I first started here last year was to find all. I had a list, and it was <laughs> it was interesting to try and find some of these places. Some of them you would never, you drive by and not even yeah. see that they were there. And thing is, I think there's probably, there's more than two people buried there, but yeah. the markers are gone. Yeah, I, unfortunately that happens over time. And I don't know if there's a map of that cemetery anywhere. <sighs> I can't say that I've seen one. I, I don't know. I, I Probably poke and around and probably find, but started out as a uh, as a family plot. Most of them did. Most yeah. of those little ones in the in the little areas around here and, and all surrounding towns they started as little fam family plots, and yep. they get full, and they move well, on. You got one off of Hill Street. That's a family. Yep, that's up behind the cornfields. Yeah. Yep. And here's another one. <laughs> then you got the Quaker one down on Old Quaker Street. That was uh, that one's like that's I believe 1710 was that, that the that original started. cemetery. That was a Quaker se a settlement, mm. and that is and that one was. Uh, well, did, that disappeared for a number of years. Nobody knew it was there. For really? Now. And uh, I know the Boy Scouts built that bridge. It's, it's nice. It's, it's it's something to see. Here's the old Quaker headstones with no names on it because they right. don't believe in that. And, and it's it, it, it's very historical feeling. And it's one of 13 we take care of now, including yeah. the Pine Grove, which is by far the biggest. But there's yeah. a lot of those little places that we have to keep up on. and Because if we don't, they're going to disappear, and we don't want that. Right. And of course, then you got the Riverdale Cemetery, which is pretty obvious. That that was probably around, I think, around the Civil War, that went into effect. Okay. But those other ones, those surrounding, I mean, and there's probably some out there we don't even know there. There's out one there. up on Menden Street. There's well, one. that one there is a lone grave. Mm -hmm. That's where he lived. He was a Revolutionary War veteran. Really? Yeah, and he had a farm there. And back then, you buried people out in the backyard. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he was buried on a farm, and so he's got the lone grave out there. Wow. But the vets go out there every year and put a flag on it. Every grave. year. Yeah, yep. and they're coming around. I just got the notification they'll be coming around to Pine Grove like they've all. We're going to continue yep. everything that we, they had in place. We're not here to rock the boat. Any Anything for the veterans. Anything that they need, we try and help out as much as we can. But now, I want to get into your uh, your, your equipment situation. Sure. Uh, of course, you're looking for another truck. You're looking for a street sweeper. I've heard comments, well, why are we buying this equipment when you've got to leave it outdoors? And I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I says, wait a minute, I, I'm sure that the highway department feels like you feel. They'd like to have a place to put all that stuff. More than you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, we've utilized, uh, we have some, we moved a lot of the smaller equipment down to the Pine Grove Cemetery because we do have some storage down yes, there. Yes, I are going to say, you picked so up we a moved out a lot building of, there, right? We moved out a lot of the small stuff that we could fit in all the mowers and, and that sort of stuff and moved it down to Pine Grove and opened up a couple of bays. So now we have a few more pieces of equipment undercover. And it's a temporary fix right now. I, I will say we are forcefully looking into a structure that it might come up in the fall, hopefully, if everything goes the way it should. But if it goes on a fall team, uh, uh, fall town meeting warrant, mm -hmm. you're not going to have it before winter. No, it won't be for this year. But if we can at least see it on the horizon coming, would be a great thing. I mean, we're, we're basically looking for a bare bones building. No right. frills. It's basically I mean, you, you a... you those tents. But yep. those tents don't solve the problem. No, they, they keep ripping. We had to replace the covers a few times. Right. And, and in the winter, they don't protect anything. They, they, they retain moisture more so than a regular building does. Mm -hmm. So they can tend to rust things out. I think one of the things you need, desperately need, that, and it, and you're not going to look at that because you're looking at bare bones, you need a car wash, uh, not a car, you need a truck wash. A truck wash, say, yeah, that would be a luxury at this point. We're looking basically just for a structure but now. that's not a luxury. That, that's <laughs> good maintenance. You, I agree with you. I These agree with you. These are trucks that are on the road throwing salt out there. 
or plowing after it's salted. Or street sweeping when it's just collecting all that Collect, stuff yeah. after. I mean, you need to be able to get that salt washed off. It. And these vehicles could last another five or ten years. At least, if you could get these things inside. In I mean, a lot of cases, they're mechanically sound that they're rotting. That's exactly the problem. That's exactly the problem. The bodies are rotting off these things. Yeah. I mean, they wash them after, I wouldn't say every snowstorm. That would be impossible because right. sometimes the temperatures don't allow it when you're washing outside. That's why you need a, a truck I, I Believe me, I agree with you. But you know, we're just trying to get. We're looking at. I mean, we. I understand what's going on, and money's tight, and I. I'm not oblivious to it, so we're well, trying to do the I think best we, we can. I think. I think most of the problem is the location. Actually, the location works out perfectly for our needs. We are up against it as far as the engineering of it goes because of the watershed. But right. we have a workable area down there that we can get an eight to ten thousand square foot building out of the watershed area and that's what we are pursuing right now we actually had a, some surveys yeah, are getting done how about putting in, the, in a wash bay we could get that outside of that area if if, if money were allowed we could get a wash I bay into that it. structure I, you might find the town would go for it and we will have to we're going to actively start with we're, we're starting with a and hopefully going to get to c we're trying just to get the structure approved and then you know we can always add things as we go we just want to get this equipment inside right. first right and then maybe a year down the line two years down the line we're going to be that much better maybe then we can look at a wash bay and addendum to it you know y your uh, your mechanic needs a better facility to work My mechanic needs a lift <laughs> you right. don't even have a lift to lift up trucks right because I mean. that that is going in the new building if we do get one. Oh, the up. Okay. Oh, we're going to get a Mohawk lift in there. That's we're going to have a bay dedicated to the mechanic so we can at least when they're doing oil changes or when you have tires blown you're out. an electric lift? Yes. Yeah, see they they, they have electric lifts now that will lift huge trucks. I went I went to uh, yeah. a show in Boston a couple of years ago yeah. and, I mean they had some yeah, they're called Gigantic, Mohawk lifts. Uh, you drive right on them. Yeah. They're, they're portable to a degree, but they're stationary for our right. purpose. You drive the truck on. It's got four pillars. Lift the truck up. Yeah. And I mean, you can lift up a tractor trailer if you had to. But yeah. And that's yeah, all we're shooting for. They, they, they had them right in the uh, Boston uh, Convention Center. Yep. yep. And you go in there and have all the trucks up with the plows and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty damn good. It's better than getting under there changing all the uh, brake pots to blow off in the middle of a snowstorm and getting dripped on and exactly. crawling on the ground in the exactly. puddle. Exactly. Which is what they dealt with this year. Yeah. All the guys. And I mean, I see what they've done with what we have. I, I, I can only imagine how much more things would be better if we had, and I don't want to say better equipment, but for the bare fact, better environment, better equipment. I mean, there's no other way to, to say it, you know. Cop and they can't build a house without a hammer, unfortunately. Right. But And, and they, we, we persevere through. I give my guys a lot of credit dealing with a lot of stuff they do, and they, they really come out, and they, they put their best foot forward. Well, I mean, I know that, like, your, your loader, is it runs great, except for the fact that the floor is gone. Yeah, the floorboards are rotted out. Yeah. On the side by the door. Yeah. yeah, I mean, come on. And there again, if that got washed on a regular basis, you wouldn't have because that that's what's loading the salt on the trucks. Yes, it is. Yep. But I don't give a damn who you are. It, if it's 20, 20 degrees outside, you're not going to go out there with a hose and start it's hosing not safe. down equipment. I, I, we actually got a step ladder for the guy, a rolling ladder this year for the guys because before that they would be climbing up on the sanders or up on the trucks when they're icy, you know, when it's cold out. And that's not safe. So we got oh. a rolling ladder so at least they could walk upstairs and right. not have to climb anything, you know. So we try, but when it, like you said, when it's 20 degrees out, you can't wash anything anyway. No. It's just not going to happen. No, it's not, if everything would freeze up. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why you need a wash station where you drive in. and they Or at least something inside of an area at least inside to wash. Yes. So, I mean, we could even work with something like that if we had a hose hookup inside a bay. and yep. we could Something like that, which could happen. I mean, we, we haven't ruled anything out. We're just seeing what's available, what will be practical, and we're going to try and present that and go down that road, and hopefully, you know, hopefully we can get it. Well, we're moving forward. At least I can see uh, that. We're, we're trying. We're trying. And we'd be happy to know the bids went out for... The the, everybody will be happy. The, the roads, uh, <laughs> we got a very favorable bid. So the road work um, is actually already started. We paved the Douglas Road Bridge yesterday. That's all paved up now. They just got a few more things to finish up, and that yep. bridge will be all done and dedicated. Probably in another month or so, that'll be a dedication ceremony. I think, uh, yeah, I think... Sometime in May, they got a, yeah. a couple weeks into May, they yep. got a dedication ceremony. Yep. Got a so that's one thing done. And now we'll start our road work and do hopefully continue what we did last year. Because what we did, like I 
talked about last year. It was a two dollar job and a dollar budget, and we stretched we stretch it to a buck fifty, and we got a good dollar fifty worth out of it because yes. cut down on a lot of potholes on those streets, not on the other streets, but on those streets. I mean, some of these streets are really in tough shape, and yeah. it, it, the winter did a job, of course. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the streets that's getting a beating now is Fowler Road. Fowler Road, Cooper Road, Kelly Road, they're all, we're not going to touch Cause those. Because of the diversion be of the traffic. Exactly, and we don't want to completely jam up everything. Those roads are atrocious, yeah. and they do have to be completely reclaimed and paved. It would be pointless to do it right now for two reasons. One, because they used his bypass for the Sutton Street project, which, which should be wrapping up at the end of this year. Right. Once that's complete, then we can get in and now you can use Sutton Road, get the traffic off of Fowler and there and deal with it. Are you sure it. Sutton Street's going to wrap up? I'm not going to guarantee it. I, 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 I try not to guarantee promises that I don't know because I mean, it's not in my right hands. Along, they are moving, they're very, they're, they have a lot of sidewalk work to do now. They have yeah. to run that whole sidewalk and that takes time. Now is that sidewalk going to run all the way to the Sutton line? I believe it's only going to run to the top of what is the five corners right now, which I believe will be the four, corn which four corners. Which makes sense. Yes. I don't think it's going any further that way. It should be stopping right at the five corners and all the way down. Because they are widening it yes. uh, in that other section between the five corners and... They're widening the, the road, but road. I believe they're not putting a sidewalk up on that section just from the five corners down. But they ran into some ledge. It's, it's always something. Oh. It's always <laughs> something. <laughs> Benson Road, there's a, there's a, he, he, I don't think he expected to be there that long. No, that construction that's going on there, they've hit, they've hit a little bit of ledge there now too. A lot more than a little. <laughs> now he, he's putting in a, a, a force feed. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't know the complete specs on that. I believe some of it is gravity and some of it is force feed sewer up there. It looked like you put a tank in. There is some, there's some of both. There is going to be some gravity line up there and some force feed, which is to what, I, I don't know that. I try to pass that off the uh, sewer superintendent and deal with it. At that section, road. yeah. It looks like, I, th I thought I saw, when I went by, I saw, I saw a tank in there. And that's probably why you had to cut so much wedge. Yeah, they, they, they get, they've been hammering away up there. But, and now that'll be all repaved. Where everything that's tore up in that section will be repaved curb to curb, yes. So that'll be a nice area once it gets done. One at a time. <laughs> now, once they do that, would you look at probably finishing up on Highland, heading up toward Fowler? I'm not going to say that's high on the punch list right now, that street. There's other ones that are in worse shape that we've seen, so we're trying to prioritize as best we can. We, I mean, we had some plans last year, and w with the way the winter went and the way some roads buckled, we had to alter it. So, yep. I, I mean, we, a lot of the streets are in tough shape, but there's some that are in far worse shape than Highland right now, like Fowler, Cooper, Kelly. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to target those for the following construction season. And we don't want to do them this year for another reason. If we happen to get in there and... and it, got through the traffic dilemmas that would be and we paved them you'd have unnecessary amount of traffic on them all the detours so why well, beat up a road that, you got the truck, prematurely the trailer tra uh, yeah why why beat them up prematurely you know right just wait till they're done in sutton street then the tra trucks will stay over there then we can deal with the side roads off of it and try and now, fix far, up that section I, I think you ought to get up there with the hot box they i believe they were up there on tuesday it's uh, ongoing up there yeah. they're up there all the time uh, you know the hot box has been out every day for oh, the I last know. two <laughs> months <I know. laughs> those guys are probably sick of the hot box now but I, i've been forced to go that way because i'm trying to get away from I, i'm actually going over the hill street then down the forward to keep away from Benson Road because it's a nightmare <laughs> up at the top of that hill. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough right now. And, you know, take some of the traffic uh, burden off them. Yeah. But they seem to be doing a good job. I mean, he's actually got a roller over there. And uh, you never seen that too often where they would actually pack it down that well. Try and keep it keep it together for the people as best as you can. I mean, fortunately, the heavy rains are in here right now where it would be well, washing stuff away. Well, so. but I've seen, I've seen sword go in. And they pack it down, but they don't do a good job of it. They you know, put it going with a hand uh, t tamp. Tampa, yep. But it doesn't do it. And then about uh, three months later, after they're gone, there's a big dip. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they say, well, we'll come back and fix it. But, you know, they're not going to fix it for a year. No. No. You put the trick with the potholes, too. Where you, where, where you can, you put some emulsion on the bottom, it's like hot top glue, then you use the whacker or, or, or a vibratory whacker well, on I'm top of it. I'm talking when they're putting the sewer in. Yep. And that can be a problem. Can you, can rec 
you know. It'll settle. If it's not laid right, right it'll it's settle. Not laid right. But these guys seem to be doing a good job. They're putting in clean fill. Yes. So hopefully this is going to work out well. We're not going to have another uh, Romanowski app. Yeah, I heard you guys had some problems with that back in the day. It was before I was here, but yeah. we try and stay on people. We do. We I do was spot. on a planning board at the time, and you know, and you know, no, no fault to Dick Sodzel. He was new on the job, and the guy it, it, things were going crazy at the time. We building was was booming. Booming. Yep. We were having planning board meetings till midnight. Wow. And so you know, you can only keep up with so much. Yeah. Yeah, the workload can be a can yeah. be a bit much. <laughs> but now the town, you know, the town's stuck with a nightmare. Well, we have we have when they open up roads now, we we try and uh, get them to sign off on some pretty strict guidelines on what yes. they're doing. So that way, you know, for a lot of reasons, for the how it's going to be after, like you said, for compaction and for safety throughout, you know, while they're doing their construction. I mean, we alter things. Every job's a little different, you know. Yeah. Every street's a little different, but we try and stay on them to make sure. And the contractor is doing a really good job. I mean. It's construction. It's an yep. inconvenience. It's dusty. It's dirty. It's loud, but it's a necessary well, that evil. The situation was a lot of ledge up there. Yeah, and you know they broke up the ledge, but in some cases they didn't break it up that small, and they threw big boulders in into it. the holes. And now what you got is nothing but uh, earth potatoes. Yeah, <laughs> and and, and uh, sinkholes all over the place. And I don't know how, what you're going to do with that. That's going to be a nightmare to fix. Yeah, we'll we'll come up with a plan like we always we'll, we'll, we'll assess the situation <laughs> when it comes. We'll be optimistic anyway. We will. We'll do. If you want to ask him, Jamie, any questions, don't wait until seven o'clock to call. Everybody <laughs> waits and they call five. Oh, I couldn't get on. Well, you got to call now. Now we're, well, we got him here. We got time to talk. I'm I'm here at least for another half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> now you got a big project this year in that uh, Main Street. Yes, yes, that's going to be a good project. We're really looking forward to it. I <laughs> wouldn't be. I mean, you're going to talk a traffic nightmare because it's a very busy street. Very busy, but one thing we have in our favor, it's very wide, so yes. that will help out. Uh, if it wasn't for those wonderful railroad tracks that are yes. underneath the road, it would be probably be a very simple job, but they are complicating it nicely. We're looking at completely removing them because it's not really worth paving over them you're not going to solve the problem. It's going to be in the same boat it was in that gutter. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. Yeah. Part of the if contract. If they had been taken out originally, it wouldn't have the problem now. Well, I mean, you probably still have a broken up road, but you wouldn't have to deal with at least that side of it. Because right. if you just try and pave to them or pave over, what happens is where the trucks are pulling into all those shops over there, it's yep. just going to, the heat comes in, the weight goes on the tracks, it's just going to pop it on the other side and everything's going to blow apart. You're going to be right back to where you started. So if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right, and but it's a busy track, road. You know, people who aren't familiar, the tracks only go up to just about where the uh, community center is. It goes into the mm -hmm. shop. It's, it's about, we're the dealing with Water Street, where the police, uh, fire station is down. That's where, about where we have the tracks we have to deal with. I think the rest will be all right, I think. Did they go up to the fire station? I don't think they went to the Yeah, they, they, they trail right up to there, right in the gutter. Oh, they do? Because yeah. I remember the train used to go into the tunnel. I have no, I have no, no reason not to believe you. Yeah. I used to watch that train when I, when I was in high school. I used to watch the train going by. They used to haul the uh, white the machinery down to the railroad the depot in Linwood where the where the China Pacific is, and they would haul coal back. To fire up the furnaces. To fire up the furnaces. But then the white machine works. I think it went on. They quit probably around 1964. They ended with with all that, but uh, yeah, that the train went through on a regular basis, real slow, <laughs> <laughs> all the way down Linwood Ave. Now they ripped them up on Linwood Ave. Yes, I believe when they did that, uh, that they tore those out. So we're just gonna we're gonna deal with it. It's got to be dealt with, and we're gonna we're gonna address it. And hopefully, after everything's said and done, we'll have some established parking spaces up on the the curbing up there, as opposed to just. A solid line will actually have parking, designated parking right. areas laid out better. We're going to try to improve that section. Now, yeah, because a lot of people park in that area. Yes. Yep. Now, you're going to continue all the way up to what? Uh, the uh, Where it turns into North Main? We're going to go up as far as Arcade Street, yeah, right where that new seam is. Yes. Right there, it looks like that work has been done. That road's not in too bad a shape, so we're going to stop right at that seam. Oh, Okay. Oh, yeah, see, we, I knew we had a call. <laughs> Here's the phone ring. Okay, let me get 
uh, make sure you get this right. Okay, go ahead, Carl. You're on. Hey, uh, good evening, guys. Uh, uh, thank you for taking my call. I'd like to start off saying uh, uh, hats off to you, Jamie, and the uh, crews for doing the best they could with this uh, weather and uh, and also on the um, on the funeral. Very so much appreciated. Thank you for that. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Um, a lot of a lot of complaints on uh, Fletcher Street across from the uh, g- golf course and also Church Street extension at uh, Quaker. Matter of fact, if you go down the Church Street extension and, and look at some of the residence yards, you'll see uh, piles of caps and other assorted things that have uh, flown off of cars from uh, you know when they hit all the uh, the ruts down there. I mean, uh, are any of those uh, roads uh, potentially on the uh, list? Fletcher Street's on this uh, this year's work that went out to bid. That is uh, one of the one of the roads that is getting done. The complete thing. It's going to be a mill and pave like we did on Hill Street. And as far as Church Street extension goes, we are looking at maybe just doing some quick mill work out there to overlay those really bad sections on the Church Street extension part because we're still involved in the tip project with the state trying to get a whole new road up there, a road widening. But we do realize in the meantime. Some work has to be done up there because it's almost unpassable. So once we get through all the roads we have in line for this year, which include Fletcher, Main Street, the rest of Douglas Road that we left off, we're looking at some sections on Hill. We are looking on continuing what we did on Old Quaker with a lot of the over- overlay to take, because that road's in tough shape. Oh, and yes, I need to uh, look out rock, uh, Harry. Yeah, very bad. So we're going to go back in there and fill in the gaps on what we did last year where we had certain amount of tonnage. We sent a hot top company in there, and we just overlaid everything. It's not the greatest. It, 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 I'll tell you, it, it's a lot better than I thought it was going to come out. It really held together yeah. good. So Fletcher Street is on there. And if we have Church Street extension, we're looking at maybe doing a little mill on those sections where you're talking about to take the curse off, you know, for the time being. Because the state takes time. When you get on these lists for all that mass works, tip, it takes time, <laughs> you know. And it, people can't deal with that forever. So we have to address it. At least part Third of it. The street goes back about 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if, I hope that answered your question on those those areas. Now on um, uh, Sutton Street, has the state given you a, uh, a potential estimate of when everything will be uh, that, that area <coughs> wrapped up and done and, and uh, good to go? Well, the state has told us they'd like to have construction wrapped by the end of this construction season, which would mean November, December, yep. depending I don't know if that includes all the punch list stuff, but we're hoping at that point that the road will be paved. I can't guarantee it. It really doesn't fall under our hands. We're we're told by them. They, they may have sidewalk work, mm-hmm. but they should have the road, basically. They're going to do the sidewalk work first. That's going to be starting very soon, oh, and okay. hopefully if that goes well and all the problems are Is addressed. Are the new sewer lines in? Most of them, yes. They have some little, little feeds they have to do, but of the main feeds are already in the main sewer lines are already in and the water lines in the water lines in and well, the drain most thing. of the drain lines are in there is some catch basins they have to put yeah. in at the bottom bottom of the hill area and we've also asked the state we're going to try and tack on to that project to do some work on that bridge mm-hmm. we're going to do some grinding on that concrete because there's no point in having a you know big job like that with a brand new road and brand new sidewalks and then you go over a bridge that looks like you know a bomb went off on it so we're trying to incorporate them to at least grind off parts of those sections where it's exposed and fill them in with with a concrete substance as opposed to the hot top that's in there right now right. so and they've been very very acceptable to it so we're hoping to include that in the project too now if any residents have any um, complaints should they talk with you guys you guys will help facilitate things with the state we've dealt with most of the complaints they call our office or they call town hall and they get in touch with us and we answer everything we can as the best we can if it's something that we can't deal with uh, we'll, we'll forward it over to the uh, the state, but uh, the contract that's up there, Amarillo, has really. If I, we call someone calls us, they have a problem. There's a trench in front of their driveway that's sunk, and they can't get their car in. I'll call up their foreman. They've been really great at getting out there and doing it in a very short time. They've been very uh, very responsive. Good Amarillo construction. They're very good at responding. They're very responsive. I mean, even this winter, they came out and dealt with. with the potholes weren't that bad for a while, then all of a sudden it happened all at once. They were out there. I called them on a. Tuesday, they wrote that, they, that Thursday with a grinding machine on a bobcat and grinding areas and paving it. I mean, you can't really ask for better than that right. response from a private contractor. Mm-hmm. So that if there's any problems, just notify my office and we'll deal with it from there. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, think we anything else, Barry? Yeah, uh, 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 there must have been a solar flare there or something. <laughs> but um, <laughs> <laughs> now, um, the uh, like uh, before you came, Jamie, the DPW had a couple of uh, open houses down there, so the uh, new people in town were aware of uh, where the DPW is, and mm-hmm. uh, and also the, you know the uh, the horrible conditions that uh, that are down there because. Uh, there are some new people in town, you know, they think that the DPW is down there on uh, Providence Road. They just see some brick buildings, so um, I don't know if they, if uh, Jim uh, is planning to have another open house. And we, plus, uh, you know, a lot of the children in town got, uh, you know, they, they enjoyed seeing the the equipment and whatnot, but uh, I just wanted to throw that thought out also. Well, we have, uh, I believe it or not, on May 10th, I believe, we had a uh, youth group contact us in the fall. They're bringing down some kids, you know, to run through the equipment and everything. We'll bring some of the yep. newest stuff out there that they, you know, to look around and everything. But we're open house 7 to 3 every day. Anybody can come down at any point, and we'd be happy to have them. People do come down. They like to come down and talk. They have a problem. Some people just want to come down and take a look around. We're there from 7 to 3 at least every day. And we, we anytime anybody, it's open to the public. It's a public building. It's a public area. And now it won't be so bad to get over the Douglas Road Bridge. You can actually get down there yeah, now. Right, right, right. So that'll make it a little bit more enjoyable once that's done. But anytime, we welcome anybody to come down and see see down there. And if they just want to see the conditions we're in or they want to see where their tax dollars are and what we have down there, we, you know, we'll be happy to show them anything, yep. anytime. Mm-hmm. Now, is, um, now, is, now is Jim and you... Um are you heading the, uh, the new facility, or are you working in harmony with the BPCC? Uh, we're working in harmony with the BPCC. Uh, Jim's definitely taking the reins on that, you know, in, in a big degree, because I, I got a lot of the day-to-day stuff that, you know, with everything right. we've been dealing with, the, you know, the weather and, other, you know, the regular construction stuff. But we've all been in talks. We've been to the BPCC already, and we're moving forward. We've got some uh, consultants coming in, and we're trying to bounce some ideas around and see how we can get this done. Yeah, because um, at the last board of selectmen meeting, Harry, I think a couple of the board of selectmen, uh, they really want to get uh, something going, and it almost sounded like they wanted to get something done as uh, as soon as possible on that. That's the message we got. That's what we're trying well, the, to. The only thing you could do is, you know, if they put something together fairly quick, you still have to have a, you have to have a special town meeting because there's no scheduled town meeting until October after this one. Right, right. I'd be honest with you, just to get all the the ducks in the line and have everything done, it would be at least till the fall anyway. You can't really rush stuff like that. you got to deal with cons, com, and a bunch of other things that take time. And then you'd have to have a special election. Mm-hmm. And uh, this being a uh, odd year, there's no, there's no election in November. Nope. So, you know, you really, if, if everything goes through, I don't see anything getting approved until next May. Mm-hmm. Because elections are very expensive, you don't want to just add that add that cost on. Well, there's no need right, to waste. Right. Well, at least you know, at least hopefully, eventually something gets done down there. We're trying. We're going to keep pushing through. You know, we're going to do everything we can for the town. We continue to do it. They've. We, we're going to try and get this together and try and get out, get that machinery inside. Hopefully, hopefully a couple new machines. You know, okay. if everything if everything plays out right, hopefully. Yeah. Right, and um, and lastly, as you know, lastly as you know, the. Um, uh, the, the schools are having a lot of uh, tough times, you know, budgetary times. And uh, as a matter of fact, I think uh, fiscal 2016, they're $200,000 short on the uh, transportation uh, funding. And I think they, they're they potentially going to have to cut four buses. And uh, they're talking about some of the parents are going to have to potentially pay more uh, for the busing and whatnot. And uh, so I think, uh, I think a lot of people would, consider or respectfully request that, uh, you know, when uh, you and Jim sit down and sharpen your pencils relative to the uh, indirect costs, you know, to the schools, that uh, whatever you can do to uh, to help the schools out, uh, that definitely would be uh, appreciated because of the um, the tough budgetary uh, I, I think uh, he's issues referring to dealing with the schools. We, we, we work in harmony with the school department as best as we can with snow removal. Uh, we do everything we can for them. They have a problem, they call us up, we address it. They need something plowed because they can't keep up with it, we'll take care of it. We're, we're all in this together. It's right, all one town. You know, we're, this isn't, we're not pitting one department against another because that, that's not productive. That's just not the way it should be. We all have to work together. You know, we, we do everything we can. And that's why, you know, I know what we, we need 
and I'm very cognizant of the idea of what we can get if we can get it because there's other, there's other departments that have issues. It's not just us. And that's why, you know, when I say a wash bay would be great, I know we need it. Let's try and get what we can get and then, you know, make sure every department's stable and then, then look for other stuff. That's what we're trying to do, you know. Well, that, that's excellent, and a lot of taxpayers would definitely appreciate, uh, you know, the, whatever you can do on that for the, to help the schools. And uh, uh, all right, I'll let someone else call in and, and, uh, and keep on doing the good work. And, uh, and like I said, I know you got a uh, tough... Uh, budget down there with the sh you know the short shortage of personnel and <laughs> just try to do the best you can and uh and hopefully someday the town will finally get a, a new dpw facility for you guys uh thank you very much been a pleasure to talk to you okay thank you Beth. uh i think he's referring to that fact that the t highway department well dpw charges the school for snow removal mm-hmm well, you know, we just have to understand, it's all the same pocket. It's just a matter of billing, yeah. It's all right. coming out of the same place. Right. I mean, the money's all coming from the same place. What the town manager is trying to do is he, he, he needs to keep your, your department operating as well as their department operating. Absolutely. It's, it's his job. Yeah. <laughs> Got to keep he, everything, all the wheels that, rolling. I'm just trying to help them to stay in business as well. Yeah. That's all it is. It's, it, it, you know, snow removal is a very costly event. For yeah, you. it definitely is. Right it now, is. you're in the red on it. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. I mean, not as bad off as if you had told me how many inches of snow we would have had. If, if I could have guessed before, and I would have thought it would have been wor worse off. But we were very fortunate that uh, the town manager and the fire chief really spearheaded and got MEMA out here and really helped us out. That was, that grant was a big, well, not a grant. It was not the, the help they sent out here, the, the equipment. It was yeah. a lifesaver. It yes. really was because we wouldn't have been able to get those roads open like they yeah, did without had, them. Yeah, uh, you the mass, was it mass? We had New York and Pennsylvania. Yeah. For three three days. Yeah, that's. They came out, The at first we had the New York group and they came in and they went down to the Rockdale section which unfortunately we fell behind because the push was to keep the schools open obviously right. and you just we didn't have enough equipment to get to both sides so it kind of fell the way by the wayside a little bit and then when we got this call that we were going to get this group from MEMA to come out we sent them right down to Rockdale and did the snow removal all in the 122 corridor to, to help those poor people out out there and then about a week later we got the Pennsylvania group to come out and they were here for three days and did an unbelievable job came in with I believe it was five bobcats with snow blowers and a couple of loaders and a couple of trucks. So we divided all the snow blowers up and just sent them out into neighborhoods to blow the snow back to widen it out and use the utilize the trucks for hauling snow in other areas and corners and stuff. Right. And unfortunately, two days after they left, it snowed again, so the snow banks were back I out. It was nice and wide, and <laughs> then we had to push it back out again. But that's just the way it was. Now they stayed in hotels. They didn't stay around here. They yeah, the state run them. They were. They were in different hotels. They were, I believe, in the South Shore, one of them, and one was up on 495. So they, had, they had quite a commute. Yes. Yeah. They, and it was spur of the moment when they show up. You literally got, I got a call one morning at 5 in the morning that the New York guys were on their way from, I think it was Attleboro at the time. So it was <laughs> like, they're going to be there in two hours. So here and you go. And the state and, picked up all the cost on there. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a lifesaver. It really was. It, we we tried to utilize them as best as they could. And we're very fortunate with our representatives in our town that no, there again, we got people One here. of your cri uh, critical pieces of equipment is that snowblower attachment. Snowblower is still down as we speak. It's still down. Yeah, yeah we you, replaced all the we replaced all the injectors in house. Thought that was the problem. Yeah. Was it? We sent it out. We found out to get that machine back up and running for next year. If this is the problem, is another forty five hundred dollars bare bones just to put a new pump in it. Wow. So we're kind of. Well, what's the cost of a new piece of equipment like well, I'm, that? I'm starting to spec that out now to see if it's worth even going into it. You know, I don't want to waste more money. That's why we didn't put it into it right now. Fortunately, it stopped snowing. The need for it kind of evaporated at the tail yeah. end. So we did what we could with the with some money to try and do the injectors, hoping that was the problem. It was part of the problem. wasn't all the problem. Right. Now it's, so we, set, we sent it out to see really what was going on. We didn't have that luxury in the winter because we had no time to get it out there. And uh, the estimates we came back was about forty five hundred to five thousand. So now we're gonna start looking around and see is it worth putting it into. Here it or again, not. you get the situation that's an old piece of equipment, so the parts aren't readily available. It, it, it's it's older. It's not that old, but I, the problem was it stayed outside for all the years, and yep. water got in the wrong places and rusted the wrong thing, and one thing led to another. 
I know we, we, we run into the situation, well, with traffic lights uh, as an example of some old stuff we got out there. Yeah, and I actually uh, contacted the state uh, about two weeks ago now. We're trying to see if we can get an upgrade on lights in the Memorial Square and yes. Ovian Square because they, they, they could use some updating those lights out there. They're, they're getting up there in age, so we're going to see if well, we can... Well, how about the ones at the fire department? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, those are... <laughs> <laughs> those those are those are ancient. We're trying to I'm tr trying to work with the state to see if we can get I, I some modern that, stuff. In in the past, we had a mechanic down there, uh, Eddie Bodwell. He's passed away since. He was, he was really sharp. I'll tell you, he was unbelievable. He used to make parts because you couldn't get them anymore. He would have <laughs> to make the parts for the traffic lights. Uh, for some of the equipment at the highway department because you couldn't, couldn't, you couldn't get them. You get had to it. fabricate your own. Yeah, he wow. would fabricate his own. Wow. And it's unbelievable. You know, they complain about the way the lights work. Well, they, they're old and they can't, <laughs> you know, things wear out. Yeah, they do, especially when things are outside all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Traffic lights work a lot. And, you know, it, you've got 351 cities and towns fighting for this money. That's that's why when I was talking about the state stuff, you know, as far as the tip and, and mass works, we're one out of 350, you know, and, yeah. and we got the Sutton Street project. It you know, took a long time, but you know, they, they, well, they divide up as best they can. I was on a so planning board, and I was a, I was a representative to Central Mass Planning mm -hmm. when we first got that. And it was all set to go, but then we ran into problems with the... Uh, uh, easements. Okay. And it turned out to be a nightmare. Everything was way out of whack. <laughs> and that's when it got put off. Yeah. And once it got put off, hey, the money went somewhere else. Yeah, if you don't you spend it, they'll give it to somebody yeah, else. Yeah, now you got to wait for it to come back. Yep. And it, a, a good, like, right, close to 20 years went by for crying out, oh, 10 wow. years at least, uh, before that money came back. Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, it was in the 90s. <laughs> wow. We, we, we would have got that originally. So, well, yeah, so hopefully this year it'll come to fruition and it'll be yeah, done, well, God, God willing. On, and, uh, it'll be know, really nice when it's was, done. Even th th now, I mean, a lot of people were upset about some of those trees being cut because they were so old. Mm -hmm. But th they're in the way. Trees get bigger. So trees get old. Get bigger, and as they get also, old, those trees were planted when people were doing hoss and buggies up yeah. and down Sutton Street. You know? We now have tractor trailers going up and down. Sutton yeah, Street. it's it's tough. I mean, and I understand why people want to keep their their historical setting out here and their country setting. And there's a lot to be said for that. We try and balance it. But, but you know, I, I I grew up on Benson Road when it, when it looked like uh, Fowler Road, <laughs> really. And it was the highway department that rebuilt it. The highway department came through and cut all the trees and blasted and blasted out the ledge. Right near my house, there was ledge coming out of the road. It looked like a, like you have on uh, Quaker Street. Quaker Street. Yeah, the ledge was coming right out of the road. I had the little kids to play on it. There's hardly any traffic. Yeah, yeah. It, it, times change. Things. Practicality steps in, yeah. like you said, with trees. And if they and hadn't stuff. rebuilt that road back in the '60s, that's a main thoroughfare in town now. Yeah, it definitely is. It's a it's a main line on my list. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a main line. But now. Uh, when they do Sutton Street, what are the plans for that intersection at uh, Providence Road? That's going to be, uh, they're going to do something there. I don't think they want to keep that uh, island in the middle. I don't believe that was part of the initial plan, but there has been a lot of talk since I got on board I hope they're going to at least pave it. We'll, we'll fix it up. Yeah. Uh, we're looking, a lot of talk has been about that intersection because it is dangerous and it's not functioning properly. No. There's no line of sight there. I can't honestly tell you that that will be done with this project. That's not part of their specs on this, but there has been a lot of talk since I came on board. Now, I'm sure it was going on before I got here, but right. there's been a lot of years. discussion about that, we that had intersection. We a, a flashing light there. You call it dummy cop. Yep. And a former town manager ran it over. Really? Yeah, with, with his town vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> a farmer going back... Uh, uh, two back from Ted. Okay. <laughs> so, well before my time yeah. out here. Well before so, my time. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's a problem. It's an ongoing problem. And the track, the trailers have a hard time making that turn. It is a tough corner. And even when the people are coming off on Church Ave on there, it's, it's, it's a tough yeah. line of sight there. It really is. 
But I mean, we tried to address it back when the uh, they were building shiny rocks. I was on a planning board, and it, but it's a hard thing to address. Yeah, especially being a state road, it makes it that much tougher. Yes. <laughs> now the other thing is, shining rocks put in that uh, pipeline from the uh, the water the water uh, pumping station. Okay. Belonged to uh, the cause realty. Okay. They ran that line up to Shiny Rocks to irrigate the golf course, mm -hmm. which I don't understand because they had plenty of water up there. <laughs> but uh, it, the road here again, the road sank. It's only a little bit of a trench. A little trench. But you, you've seen it. It's a nightmare. I I will say the state. Anytime I've had to call them, they I, they're not there the next day. They have a lot lot more mileage than I have to deal with. Right. If if you call them enough, we have some we have some nice they they. Do the best they can, and you well, know. Somebody's gonna fill that in. It's gonna be filled in. I we've talked to them quite recently about some other stuff on that stretch of road that has to be looked at. But like you said, it's one stretch of road in one town as you opposed know, that, to. That's something that the, the uh, developer who who's since gone, and the bank took it over. The bond would have worn out by now. Would have been well, expired by a, now. Uh, anyway, it was a line of credit, so the bank ended up with the project. Okay. And I think they pretty much got it. Uh, well, they've gone a long way with it anyway, uh, to, to resolving the problem. They got the golf course built and everything else. But th and it's a nice golf course. Yeah. It's that very should nice be golf something course. that they, uh, they take care of. But that would be something you have to address with the planning board to get on them. Yeah. Because that that, that was what, that the purpose of that trench. Uh, you, I'm getting education right here. I know the trench is there. I had no idea oh, what you know it, it was for. No, I had no idea. I'm okay. getting education as I sit here. On the, on the other side of the river, if you look down right after the bridge, you see that brick building. The pumping down station. There? I know the pumping station. Yeah. I didn't realize it pumped up though. I yeah. would have thought there was water up. You know, I would have well, known. That's what I, I, <laughs> they I, that's known. What I said to the developer at the time. Why do you need that water? There's a ton of water up on that golf course. You know, you <laughs> you had that situation yeah, too. Yes, yes. And why they went to that, I don't know. See, I'm learning, I like this. I'm learning something new. I, this is good. I like yeah. this. I learn something new every day. Let me tell you, I've learned a lot in the last year out here. It's and, been a and he ran that line all the way up uh, Sutton Street, but then you know Dick Sawzell paved Sutton Street, which is in good shape now. So that part of the trench has been covered over, but it's down in on Providence Road and going on where to the trench goes across. Sutton I didn't realize Street. that was what it was for. Yeah. Well, that gives me a little backstory now, so yeah. at least I know, the, you know, can pursue it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Every little bit helps. But, uh, yeah, we're getting down to time. Oh, we got a phone call. We have a phone call? You got the light on. <laughs> He's got to remember to shut the light off. As I look up, I see the light on. I try not to look up because I'm looking at myself. It's still a little awkward <laughs> looking at myself <laughs> up there. <laughs> I'm used to it. I've been doing it for 25 You're years. You're a seasoned pro. It. I've been doing it. I, <laughs> I like coming on this show, though. It's nice. I, you know, try to get on more often when I can. And Well, I think people like to know what's going on. I'm happy to tell them. Anytime, you know, unfortunately, I can't get to all my calls every day or all my emails yep. because it... There's only so many hours, and I'm trying to be on the road and seeing other things. So if people are hearing it, don't take it personally. If I'm not getting back to you, I try to call everybody back as soon as I can. You know, it's not that day sometimes, but we try. We do our best. We do our best. Now, it's the thing is, uh, Sutton Street, okay, we can summarize. Sutton Street should be ready probably by fall. It's winter, fall, yeah. yeah. Uh, that sounds reasonable. The, uh, the road closings will, will ease up a little bit once yep. they get most of their work That's done. That's the plan. So you'll be able to get through. It might be a little tough getting through, but it, you'll be able to go through. If everything goes right this year, if everything goes right, let me find a little wood because and I'm in the business that nothing ever goes the way it's supposed right. to. We should have Sutton Street fairly near completed. You have the Douglas Road Bridge will be done. Yep. Fletcher Street will be paved. Yep. The rest of Douglas Road will be paved. Sections of Old Quaker will be paved. Main Street from Town Hall to Arcade Street will have the rails removed and be paved. Yep. Upper Church Street extension will be worked on. I'm not going to say it's going to be a brand new road, but there'll be some work done out there. And we're going to try and set up some other spot paving in areas, as well as get back to what we started on Sprague Street last year. If everything goes right, now that's asking a lot, but right. we're going to try to proceed with that plan. One more spot came to mind, Ovian Square. And I do apologize, Ovian Square is on this list too for this oh, okay. year. I do apologize, that, that is on this plan for this year. We're going to mill it. Repave that section. See, that should have been done when they did the streetscape, but the idea was they were going to try to move things around. Things around, so it lined up better. 
we're not going to move things around. We're going to pave it. I don't see how you can do it. There's too much electrical under there now to slide everything yeah. over. It'd be a really big job. Not only that, you're talking land takings. Yes. And prime property is the downtown area. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we're going to go in there. We're going to mill it. We're going to pave it. We're going to because it's it's all rutted up. It's gone. It, it's it, it was bad. It's bad. We're going to try and get some new structures in there. Mill it, pave it, so that then that will be done. So it yep. could be. We're looking forward to this construction season. We're hoping to get a lot done, and this is on top of all the field mowing, on the cemetery mowing, and all everything out of the parks, the town commons, and everything else that yep. pops up. So our guys are busy. That's why we, you know, we look forward to. Now you got the you got the college kids coming in. Yep, we're going to iron that out in the next week or so. We're going to get our list together for that. They should be starting pretty soon, so we'll get them out there. Are you taking applications or? Uh, we're always taking applications. Anytime, so send you, it in. If you got a college kid looking for a summer job, send them now. Great summer job. It is. It is. They'll get an honest day's work. They'll get an honest yeah. pay. They'll get forty hours a week. Yeah. So I mean, come on. You know, how can you go wrong? They, they get a great tan <laughs> and, and too. You, yeah, you get a great tan. To work outdoors <laughs> all summer long. <laughs> you know, someone said to me, "Why don't they do what they did uh, forty years ago?" And not use the sweet sweeper, just go out there with the brooms. Like, they had a bigger crew back then. There wasn't as much many roads either. There weren't as many roads, and they had a bigger crew. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would like to see someone try and sweep Church Street in the middle of the day with a broom. That would they be used to have a uh, sweeper that went along the sidewalks. I'm look. I'd like to get a sidewalk sweeper. That way, you wouldn't hear those uh, backpack blowers right. as much. They make attachments for the sidewalk machines we have. We just don't have one. Right. You know, there's there's a machine out there for everything. It's just a matter of prioritizing what we need to function. We don't need a sidewalk sweeper to function right now. Right. We need a street sweeper. Yes. We need plow trucks. That we need. Yeah. We need a building. You know, these are things yep. we need. So that's why we're. You know, trying to chip away at our needs. If get some of these items, if we can get a street sweeper, if we can get a truck, I'm not going to say that's going to be the end of it because next year there's going to be another truck that's going to break. I think it's you find ongoing. the town's pretty responsive. They're not going to vote an override, but they will vote some debt exclusions. And, and that's great. That, you know, and I, 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 the public's been great. They supported us with the plan last year. They gave us money for roads. They're yeah. going to see that turned around this year. They're going to see something well, getting done. Well, they're seeing a result from it. Too. And, and that's what it's supposed to be. That's yeah. how it's supposed to be. They, you know, they fund us. We give back. That's that's how it has yep. to work. You know, we do our best. And sometimes things come up that, you know, they have to alter plans. I mean, well, every... Of course, you got a little bit more cash, thanks to the governor. The governor did give us a little bit more money, which yep. was nice. So that'll get... We gave us another, I believe, 71000 in pothole money. So that'll go down <laughs> and it will be used because we... Be, right. It will be... It will... It will we will fill in holes with that $71,000, yeah. believe me. There's more than that worth of it out and, there. But and it's good that they, the town gave you the hot box. The, the hot box is great. The hot, yeah. It keeps that hot top fresh all day, which is up until about this week. You, If you went out and got hot top, you waste half the load because it cools off. Now you go down and get two ton, two ton stays hot. Yeah. You don't have to go down and get five ton to keep two ton hot, <laughs> which is how you used to have to do it. I yeah. mean, that's just, that's just the way it was done. And throw away the rest. And that's unfortunate, but that's what got done in the past. That's the only way you could do it. Yeah. But now with, a, once again, a piece of equipment that we're util utilizing, it's more productive. It, right. The holes are getting filled quicker because we have hot top all day. We can't be at every street every day, but yeah. it's out there every day and filling holes every day. We're not having to dump and waste material, waste money. It goes out and it fills holes. Okay. Well, we are going to have to wrap it up now. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you for... Uh, Is that a uh, phone call? <laughs> yeah. He, took it, he, he, he has a high... I'm going to get on the new switch. That switch is getting stuck. <laughs> okay. We will see you. Uh, I won't... I will, we don't have a show for next week. I'm trying to work on something, getting a whole, somebody to come on. But uh, we'd like to have you back. Anytime. It was an absolute pleasure. It always is. All I right. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank we'll, you. We will see you next Wednesday.